Hello there, eighth grade math students. Mr. Lawrence here, and I'm doing a little enrichment with you because um, you've shown that you've already mastered the skill that we're working on. I'm very proud of you for that. You're doing a great job. Uh, some of your classmates are working hard, but they need a little more practice at what they're doing. So instead of making you do something you've already mastered, I'm going to take you a little bit deeper. Now, remember a couple years ago, they gave you these questions in math, and, and they were so lame because you were so smart, you could figure them out in like two seconds. You know, they give you this pattern like 4, 7, 10, 13, 16, 19, and they say, you know, tell us what the next three terms are. Okay, and I guess if you're in like first or second grade, that might be a little bit challenging, but for you guys, it was too easy, you know? So, I thought, man, I hate those kind of questions. I hate when I'm not being challenged. What, wouldn't it be a cooler question if they could ask me what like the 155th term in a sequence is and I could figure out a way to find the 155th term without listing all the terms before it? You know what I'm saying? I mean, like right here I've got, what do I have here? I've got one, two, three, four, five, six terms. Well, the seventh term is obviously 22. The eighth term is 25. To figure out the 150th term or whatever I said before, I don't want to have to list out the first 149 terms. I want to be able to create a formula. So I'm going to show you how to do this. It's really easy. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a table like this. You know, one, two, three, four, five. Then I'm going to put an N there. N is where my formula is going to go. It's the unknown number. And then after I have my formula, I'm going to show you how easy it is to figure out the 215th term. Now, by the way, be before we actually get to this, some of you don't understand what I'm talking about with this n. You see, I can count all the way up to n. It just means I can keep counting until I reach any number I want. And it's just the unknown number, because I didn't say count all the way up to 100 or count all the way up to 1,000. I mean, I don't really want to count all the way up to 1,000. I want to count all the way up to an unknown number. Call it n. Now, I'm guessing that since you're new to algebra, you may not know what number comes after n. Tell you what, let's play a little game here. I'm going to name a number. You tell me what number comes after it, okay? So I'm going to say 4. And of course, you're going to say 5. And I'm going to ask how you got there. And uh, you're going to say, well, I added 1. Yeah, 4 plus 1 is 5, right? Let's try this. Let's try this game again. Okay, let's try 17. Well, you're going to say 18. How'd you get there? Well, I added 1. 17 plus 1 is 18. All right, let's try one more time. Let's go with uh, 1,036. You're, of course, you, of course, are going to say 1,000. 37. How'd you get there? Well, you added 1. 1,036 plus 1 is 1,037. All right, you ready? What number comes after n? Now, if you were thinking, oh, I want you to go home, boil some pasta, let it cool, and then beat yourself with it. Because you weren't listening to yourself before. See, to get to 5, I had to take the previous number and add 1. 4 plus 1. To get to 18, I had to take the previous number, 17, add 1, 17 plus 1. To get to 1,037, you had to take 1,036 and add 1. Well, if the previous number is n, the next number must take n and add 1 to it. The next number is n plus 1. Well, what number comes after that? Oh, I know Jordan knows. That's going to be n plus 2. And then so on, and it keeps on going. Hey, what number would come before n? What's that? Did you say n minus 1? Excellent. n minus 1. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to create a formula using n or any variable. I like to use n. And that formula is going to allow me to calculate any term in the sequence that I want. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I make my table. Now the first term is 4, right? So I'm going to put a 4 in there. Hold on a second. Let me switch to black. There we go. We got 4. And then 7 is the second term. And then 10 is the third term. 13. And then 16. Now, 
it, granted, it listed six terms, but I don't need six terms to find the pattern. Okay. Now, you're so smart, I'll bet you can tell me that the first, that the first differences are all plus three. The pattern is going up plus three, right? Plus three every time. This is what we call a linear pattern. You've heard me use that word linear a lot. This is called a linear pattern, okay? Because the first differences all match, all right? Now, with this linear pattern, I'm going to take this repeating number, this 3, this plus 3, and I'm going to multiply it by n. Yeah, I'm going to go 3 times n. Now, I'm going to do what I call a comparison line. And I'm going to put these blanks down here. And I'm going to substitute in 1 for n and put it here. So in other words, 3 times 1. Well, that, of course, is 3. And then for this blank, I'm going to do 3, substituting in 2 for n. See, these are my n numbers right here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 215. They're all n. How do I know? Well, there's an n right there. Right? These are the nth number, whichever one I'm stopping at, nth term. So 3 times 2 is 6. Okay? And then I'll have 9. 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 4 is 12. And 3 times 5 is 15. So I'm going to ask myself, how do I turn these green numbers, this comparison line, into the original numbers? Well, let's see. If I take 3 and I add 1 to it, I get 4. If I take 6 and I add 1 to it, I'm going to get 7. And 9 plus 1. Ooh, it looks like I'm adding 1 every time. By the way, you got to check it at least three times. If you only check it once, you're going to be wrong an awful lot. If you check it twice, you'll be right most of the time. You check it three times for this class, and you're going to be right 99% of the time. You check it five times, you're going to be really good. Okay, so for the nth term, I know the answer is going to be something like 3n. 3 times n. But since all those green numbers that were multiples of 3 were one less than the original numbers, the 4, 7, 10, 13, and 16, I'm going to have to add 1 to my pattern, my formula. So the nth term is 3n plus 1. This term now allows me to figure out any term in the sequence. If I want to figure out the fifth term, I would do 3 times 5 plus 1. Well, that'd be 15 plus 1. That would be 16. And look at that. There's a 16 sitting right there in the fifth spot. Okay. So let's do it for the 215th term. So I'm going to go 3 times 215. And then I'm going to add 1. And I believe that this multiplied is going to be 645 plus 1. So my 215th term is going to be 646. I don't know about you, but I think this is pretty cool. I can figure out any term in the sequence that I want if I do this right. Okay, let's try this one here. Let's try this one. I'll walk you, walk you through this one, uh, and then I'll let you try one on your own. All right, so I've got my table, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and up to 215. Now, it won't always be 215. I just copied and pasted it. It was easier to do it that way. So I'm going to put 7 here, and then 11. The third term is 15. The fourth term is 19, and the fifth term is 23. I'm going to go looking for my first differences. Well, let's see. That's plus 4, the first difference. And this first difference is plus 4. Ooh, they're matching. I like it. It's plus 4 all the way across, isn't it? Plus 4 all the way across. So I know that I'm going to take this 4 and multiply it by n. So the pattern is going to be a linear pattern, something like 4 times n. Now, i got to do my comparison line. All I do is take this 1 and multiply it by 4. I put it here. 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 4 times 3 is 12. 4 times 4 is 16. And 4 times 5 is 20. Now I ask myself, how do I turn 20 into 23? Well, I think I have to add 3, don't I? I have to add 3. To turn 16 to 19, sure enough, I have to add 3. To turn 8 into 11, I have to add 3. So my pattern is going to be 4 times n plus 3. There you go.
There you go. To get the 215 term, I'll do 4 times 215 plus 3. I think this is going to be 860 plus 3. My 215 term will be 863. Yeah, it's pretty crazy, isn't it? All right, I'll tell you what. I'm going to pause the video on this one. I want you to see if you can figure it out on your own. Pause the video. If you're ready, if you've got your answer, watch my solution and see if we match, okay? All right, here we go. So the first thing I'm going to do is copy down the, the pattern into my table. So I'm going to have 6, 1, negative 4, negative 9, negative 14. Well, let's see here. Looks like these are going down. It's not plus 1, it's minus 5. 1 minus 5 is negative 4. Negative 4 minus 5 is negative 9. Negative 9 minus 5 is negative 14. So that means that this is a linear pattern, but to n, I'm going to multiply it by negative 5. Yeah, it's going to be minus 5n. So let's make my comparison line. And I'm going to multiply each one of these by negative 5. And so I'm going to get negative 5. Then I'm going to get negative 10. And I'm going to get negative 15, negative 20, and negative 25. And how do I turn, how do I turn negative 5 into 6? Well, I think I'm going to add 11. How about, I mean, if you're not sure, you can go like this. You can go negative 10 plus a variable equals 1. And then I can solve for the variable. And so then x is going to equal 11, or positive 11. And that's what I'm saying. I'm adding 11 each time. Okay, make sure you check it at least three times. Doesn't matter which three you use, whichever three look easiest to you. And if it works three times, I say you can move on. So I'm going to take negative 5, multiply it by n, and then I'm going to add 11. Right? Okay, so let me see here. To get the 215th term, I'm going to go negative 5 times 215 plus 11. And so I think I'm going to get negative 1,075 plus 11. Well, that should end up equaling negative 1,064. And that is the 215 term. I don't know about you, but I feel pretty smart when I can do these. Again, it's a linear pattern because the first differences were all the same. All right, one more for you to try. Go ahead and pause the video when you're ready. You'll see my solution. And here comes Mr. Lawrence's solution. So I'm going to put negative 7 minus 5 minus 3 minus 1 plus 1. Looks like I'm adding 2 every time. I'm adding 2, right? First difference plus 2, plus 2, plus 2. Oh, yeah, it's adding 2 every time. So I'm going to multiply n times 2 and get 2n. All right, when I do that, I'm going to multiply 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 by 2. So I'm going to get 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. So how do I turn 10 into 1? Well, I think I'm going to subtract 9. Does that work on 4? If I do 4 minus 9, do I get negative 5? I sure do. And then, of course, 8 minus 9 is negative 1, so minus 9. So my formula is going to be 2 times n minus 9. All right. So let's try 2 times 215. And then we'll take away 9. I think that's going to be 430 minus 9. Looks like the 215th term is going to be 421. And that is that, ladies and gentlemen. So I have a few problems for you to practice with. 
on a worksheet. Mr. Lawrence signing off. Have a good day, everybody.